Good to see you, everybody. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's Betty back. Hey, Ain't you happy? Yes, I can't. Just get on that. Uh, it's good to see everybody again. It's a good crowd for Wednesday night. Real good crowd. Glad to see y'all. Uh, <clears throat> I have one to start with. I have a kind of short announcement. Uh, on uh, Monday, my brother in law, Tina's brother, passed away. Uh, Steve Siegel. Uh, his uh, visitation will be from 6 to 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow on Thursday. The uh, funeral will be graveside services on the uh, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Uh, Friday. And, uh, Friday. 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 What did I say? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> I gotta go get a COVID shot Saturday, that's what I was thinking. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it'll be Friday, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, Friday. Right. At 10 o'clock at the uh, cemetery out here. Anybody else? Anybody got prayer list? Yes, ma'am. I would. I've asked prayer for my brother, mm -hmm. and I've asked your last speaking on his prayer list. But I also ask for prayers for a decision. We have for what? A decision. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get him to move in the little house because he can't see the drive. He can't walk across the room. He cannot breathe. Right. So. You know, he looks there. Just that he makes a decision. Okay. What is his name? Jack. 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 He's my okay. neighbor, and we share a bunch of them. Yes, ma'am. Merle Jack, Stephen and Wayne should recap a lot of those Stepson's one still with his son. Um, yeah, that's correct. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. My brother, 
Right, yeah. At the hospital and at home, they still have to go through therapy, but he is out and doing good. good to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mentioned that uh, Sunday, and you told me Sunday, and I didn't. I think he was fixing to get out of the hospital. He get out Tuesday, and he finally okay. got out. Okay, good deal.
Uh, even probably prior to that, uh, I read this and I said, you know, I got to share it because I think it's important that we lift this, our country up in prayer. And I preached that, you know, from the pulpit, but it said, liberal pastor and congressman opens the 117th Congress with a eight-woman prayer. And here's what it said. So there had been a lot of social media hubbub about congressmen uh, receiving prayer in the United States House of Representatives, which is close to an A man and an A woman, striving to include all gender, not to offend anyone. And not only that, but they go further in to say, Amen. Of course, we know it derives from a Hebrew uh, scripture, which no, there's no gender really connected with the word itself. What it means is so this. That's all that Amen means. It's so this. And so, but they go on and say that they they pray in in their clothing of their prayer. They want to make sure until the very end. And they have a point that they started talking about molested, uh, God, the Hebrew creator, the uh, God knoweth all, the many different names and that they have for God. And he said, we want to include all of them in our prayer. So they're not only recognizing God, but they're recognizing all other false religions that are associated with that. And then, like I said, they're trying to do a breakdown of, of the deal. And they said, they, uh, they said that, that the prayers came against the purpose of the United States House of Representatives adopted a new general gen, gender nature policy avoiding references to father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, um, uncle, and etc. In favor of parents, child, sibling, and parents, sibling. So they don't want to recognize any of those things in their in religion, uh, in in their prayer, and they're including it all in their prayer. So uh, it's it's that's where our world is going to, folks, and that's, and that's what we're having to deal with on a day to day basis. That's the preachers doing that. I mean. That, that's a liberal pastor congressman. He, he, uh, he was a pastor of a Methodist church uh, in Kentucky. Yeah. Well, you would think he'd know what amen means. That's well, the thing about it is, he's a liberal preacher. <laughs> you, you missed the first point. He is a liberal preacher. In other words, one of those that don't want to offend anybody. You know, uh, can you imagine how long he would last here in our church? Uh, not very long. Amen. And then one other second thing, and I'm, I'm, I promise I'm going to really good. We've got a good program for you tonight, I promise. It says Te Texas pastor shot dead by a man hiding in the church after a police chase. A 21-year-old man hiding from police in the bathroom of an East Texas uh, church killed the pastor, injured two other people, including the pastor's wife, on Sunday, January the 3rd. The suspect, Mark McWilliams, uh, was, uh, uh, the, was pastor of the Methodist church in, in that city, and while he was preparing for a Sunday morning service, and he, the man came out and he shot him oh, yeah. to death and also wounded his wife. Mm -hmm. And but thank God for the Harrison County deputies. They got behind him. They GPS, they just cut his car off and they got it. So, but can you imagine, I mean, being up here at church, I'm getting ready for a sermon and somebody be hiding in the bathroom and they come out and they start cheating people at the end of the service. I got news for you. If he comes out with anything other than his hand, 
<laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah, Amen. They won't have to worry about how I've been chased in our church, boy. <laughs> We got something special for you tonight. Uh, I preached Sunday. If y'all were with us and, and remember, I hope y'all can remember one week to the next what I preached on. But I preached on discipleship. And after the service was over, and I mentioned it during the service, and I don't know whether y'all remember it or not, but uh, Trevor came up to me and he wanted to know if he could give a testimony concerning discipleship. So we're going to ask Trevor if he would come, and he's going to do the service for you tonight. Not only was a pretty wife for an EMT, but he's also a police officer. So. We are well service. We don't get paid big bucks. 
and we're new around looking, you know, for me to do an adoption. You look online and adopt in the room forty thousand oh, mm -hmm. And so we we kind of looked around and what do we need? Well, we know we're gonna need an attorney. And I spoke with our at the time assistant district attorney who said he would work me a deal and I said, Okay, that's that's great. And then about a week later he called me and said, I just realized I can't represent you. both parents for various felony charges. He said it created conflict of interest. It wouldn't look good. He said, well, let me call some friends of mine and see what we can do. So he called me back a little bit later and said, call, call this guy. Uh, he's, I told him kind of the deal I had worked with you. Know, go talk to him. So I call him, make an appointment. We go over and meet with him in, uh, over in Abilene. And we explain kind of what's going on, and we're looking at what bills we can afford not to pay to pay this attorney. And so we meet with him, and, and he kind of looks the data up in the system, and, and he gets some background, and we said, "What's what's this going to cost us?" He leaned back in his chair. And he said, a cop and a medic want to adopt a kid and give it a chance at a better life. He said, I'm not going to try to be So, okay, we've got an attorney, but now you've got to have a home study. You've got to make sure your home is fit. We've got people running around here, kids all day long don't have a fit home, but if you want to adopt a kid, you've got to have a home. I think our priorities are messed up. Mm -hmm. So we start calling around. Anybody that does a home study, you're looking at a six month wait list of fifteen hundred dollars. I got a home this one place and they said, Paul, call this lady, she does it for us when we're swamped. I gave her a call and I made her what was going on and she said, I charge five hundred dollars. And I said, well, how long are we going to have to wait to do this? She said, I'll be there please to that work. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Works for us. So we got our home study. We got our attorney. Well, they ain't got to have a crib and clothes. A baby put in the house. <laughs> and uh, so we're, you know, we're four paid. We can't have this home study. You know, we're having it before we get paid again. We don't have anything for this kid. We know that's just going to kind of turn this, this lady off of telling us we can have this kid. You know, telling the court we can have this kid because we don't have anything for a baby. And uh, so we're looking at what what credit card has how much on it. You know, how much can we scrape here? How much can we skim there? And we're standing in target looking. And that morning, one of our credit cards increased a thousand dollars. Wow! A friend of ours had a, had a friend that, that had been adopted. She had all kinds of boy clothes. Brought us garbage bags full wow. of boy clothes. We expected a premature drug addicted baby. What's the wrong with it? And it's, it's hard to believe that when you, when you do so much wrong in your life, you don't think that you deserve anything. You know, you, you put all that until you get what you pay for. Well, if you're not paying much, what do you deserve? And, uh, you know, I, I looked at that and it, it's, you know, I, I wouldn't trade my life for anything. Man. Um, you know, I, 
I married my wife knowing that she could, we couldn't have children together. I knew that. She'll tell you about her dream.
you know, the more we talk, the more he's looking at us like, you're just telling me what I want to hear. You know, you're just trying to get me to go to jail. I, you know, and that, that was just the vibe I got from him. And I said, well, if I call the preacher, would you talk to him? He said, yeah, I like that. I said, you know, I'm not going to sit here for Ken to say something that I think I know. I said, I'll let you talk to somebody that knows. And uh, so I text my wife. And I said, uh, do you have Kendra's phone number? And she said, yeah, she, the, her first thought is, what's wrong? That's the first thought. What's wrong? I said, I'll explain it a little bit. I just need his number. So she gives me his number. And I, I call him. I forgot he was still on vacation. <laughs> if I'm working, everybody's available. <laughs> so he answered the phone and I, I explained to him what was going on I said can you mind just talking to him he said no I don't mind so we, I have it on speaker phone and you know, you know James talks to him and, and before it's over he's, he's asking God to put his heart you know what I'm saying and you know, I, my wife's in the business of saving lives and, and picking people up off the floor, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> more time a day than she can probably care to count, but, you know, I know Shady's in the business of burning the people on their worst day. You know, it, it's, in, in my line of work, it's not often, it, it, it's, pretty rare that, that you get to show up and actually help somebody. Yeah. Most people, you know, we say we can only help those that want help. And most people call, they don't really want help, they just want to solve their problem for that moment in time. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's very rare that you actually get to help somebody. I, I can count, I've probably done CPR on somebody three or four times in my 15 years. And it's never turned out good. Um, my record so far is six days before they passed away. But you know, and and, and for us, if we if we save somebody's life, we get a little pain, we get like we're up here, we get to be all proud, and we, we save somebody, or we did something, we did good. And you know, I always joke with my supervisors about my life savings. Where's my life saving <laughs> And, you know, that, that little pin now is insignificant. Amen. I, I can care less about a pin on me. You know, for all the, all the wrong I've ever done and all the, All the things I've probably ever done that God's looking down, shaking his head, going, I didn't, I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> you know, if I've done one thing in my life that's that's worthy of all his blessings, I hope. The other night, that was my one. Amen. Thank you. 
we're about to admit that thing, so I should probably wear it. <laughs> I know that's my wife's favorite sound to hear the Velcro every morning when I walk in the door.
Thank you, David, for the side show. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and the good music program. And thank you, Brother Donnie, for coming over and singing for us tonight. Uh, you did a tremendous job. Thank you, Brother Donnie. Bless her, strengthen her, and conquer her in the name of Jesus. 